The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. According to the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, Canada and the world are in the grips of a mental health crisis that ruins health, threatens lives, and hurts economies. Knowing the facts are the first steps to creating hope. Jason Moorhouse of High Boop agrees. Just look at the headlines on a daily basis about mental health. They're top of mind, he says. The challenge Moorhouse says is, how do you know what your own mental well-being is? Where do you go for a checkup? And then what? These are the questions he asked himself, for which he had trouble finding answers. He says, there was a gap in available resources, so I decided to fill it. Hi Boop is the website he created, a platform that consolidates standardized mental health tests and provides a comprehensive assessment. I invited Jason Moorhouse of Hi Boop to join me for a conversation that matters about the resources needed by anyone when facing a range of mental and emotional challenges. Jason, welcome. Thank you, and thanks for having me. My pleasure. Uh, this is a topic that um, many times people are a little uh, shy uh, yeah. to bring up. Um, and yet it is, as I stated off the top, it's a huge problem. From your perspective, like how significant is it within the general population, let's say here in Canada? Uh, well, it's global, but uh, if you look at just, it's not even just our thesis, it's global data that sees it on an extremely high curve of, um, of, of individuals um, in crisis. And that's, that's the problem is we wait till crisis <clears throat> um, to address something that could have been addressed before. Uh, and many of us don't have doctors, at least in BC or Canada, or just, it's a global thing. So yeah, normally we'd, you would go to the doctor and say, I am suffering, I think I'm suffering from whatever it is, depression, something like that. And uh, you, you, you would get some form of singular treatment, which is clearly flawed well you might get some treatment from your gp your gp is uh, going to throw some pills at you but what resources do they have that are available to them and so you're still in that same position aren't you you are uh, and it's not it's not the caregiver's fault your gp or, or whatever it might be your therapist and um they have 12 minutes with you because of the capacity uh maybe 24 if you're if you're lucky um to to try to get to something that you know um gets you back on a baseline <clears throat> what we're doing is is to accelerate that so that the practitioner uh the gp whatever it might be is has a full profile based on their science um which is you know the same piece of paper you're going to fill out to see if you qualify for uh, generalized anxiety or something like that. So we're just making it easier for, for those care providers. You had personal reasons for wanting to do this. What was yeah. your journey that led you to say, hang on a second, I need some assistance and the assistance that I need isn't here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the, I mean, for me, like I've always, I've always, uh, known there was like something like whatever you, you know when you're kind of not like <laughs> not firing on all cylinders yeah, yeah. Or, or you don't fit in anywhere kind of thing so that's fine like i i accepted that um i started a couple companies which is very common based on my uh eventual diagnosis because uh, we just create our own worlds um and successfully had a company in Victoria to which I um, had exited and merged and it was 100 people now it's like 300 people so but in that time the amount of and even before it like I would go to the walk clinic and I was like I have like somatic 
anxiety. So it's literally in my nervous system. This is not butterflies or stress. Uh, I don't know. They, but again, it'd be like a 12 minute session. So when I finally got to a point of actually seeking help because I, I was concerned not just about myself, but the people around me and my employees, my walls are shrinking and I can't figure out why. So I had uh, sought out treatment. It was expensive and uh, I was in the position to do it, but mm, most of us aren't. Uh, to get those uh, more holistic diagnosis. So the diagnosis or the assessment, we do the assessments, not the diagnosis. Uh, we, it's not just a BC or Canadian thing, is, is it, statistically it takes 11 years from the first symptom. And by the, not 11 years, it's an American study, but uh, you start to pick up other mental health issues. It could be substance use, coping, uh, personality disorders, uh, obviously increased anxiety, depression. So 11 years, I mean, if you go, keep going, there's uh, suicide rates, all of those things. 11 years is it's way too long. <laughs> The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. My understanding that when you start to uh, experience mental health challenges, of course your brain is rewiring itself uh, to follow uh, beliefs, patterns, or uh, uh, you know a variety of other things that now be, start to become entrenched. So right. it's important that you get to addressing and understanding what's happening to you so that you can then help to re rewire your brain differently. Do I have that, that right? Yeah, just to, I'm not a doctor, so, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so obviously our team has done a lot of research. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's a, that's a fair statement, but at the end of the, for some individual in your life that is struggling, um, the, the sequence in which our professionals, doctors, all that kind of stuff, um, treat things um, is, is very much a singular approach. So, you know, we're in Vancouver, we look at Hastings or Victoria, Pandora. Uh, so if you pick addictions, we're funding as best we can, but we're not dealing with the other part. And that's the same for eating disorders, um, deep depression, postpartum, like all those things are interlocked. So what we are doing with their science and our algorithm, our product, is to connect that constellation so that that person at least has awareness. Because we have to self-advocate most of the time, which is what, what I did. Self-advocate? Yeah. So to somebody who's uh, unaware of that, what does that mean? We often have to, if we have the capacity and energy to, to, to know something is, is wrong and then everybody's out on, you know, Dr. Google or something trying to figure out what's going on, they misdiagnose themselves and, um, and, and there's, there's a lot of that. Um, so it, it's a lot of these disorders are indicators of something else going on. So anxiety, again, not a doctor. Anxiety, depression, uh, there's things you're born with, uh, neurodivergency, all those kind of things. We know that statistically, um, there is always a, like a root cause. A trauma is a big one. I'm sure if you're, uh, you're bipolar, you're gonna inherit some things but we don't treat that. We don't assess for it. And that's the 11 years. The 11 years is starting with the, the indicator symptom of, I can't understand why this um, anxiety is now so debilitating. I just thought I was shy and I'm talking about myself. Um, so when I you know, took the time and effort, which was a great experience, 
and very expensive. Uh, yeah, they were like, you have ADHD. I'm like, I know those kids. I don't have ADHD. And you have a complex uh, PTSD and generalized anxiety disorder. That took 45 years. Uh, I was in school. They were like, you're dyslexic or something. And I just don't understand why it takes so long. Well, part of what you said is there's a gap in resources and assessment tools. That's a big part of it, isn't it? Correct. So that's what we're doing. So how did you go about putting this together? So after I left, uh, I'm still part of, I'm still on the board and stuff, my last company. Um, I had, uh, you know, made a lot of progress. And, and, and I just, but there was this thing which was, this is just unfair. I see it around me. I see it with my, my own kids, um, you know, family, just this, this complete void of actually doing the, the right thing in the right sequence to, uh, so I, I just had the idea and then I was like, I'm going to start this. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but here we are, like we're starting our first pilot next week. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Well, you just touched on a very important point, uh, the right thing in the right sequence. Yeah. Because you were earlier talking about people will go to Dr. Google and they'll go, okay, I'll yeah. type in something and they'll read information. They don't know whether or not the, that's the right starting point. They don't know whether or not the, what they're reading there is uh, um, an appropriate next step. Uh, and so what, what were the resources that you brought together so that now when somebody goes to iBoop, they will get uh, led down a path that says this is where you need to start and the order that you have to go in? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's up to the care provider to, you know, figure out the order. But what we do is identify the um, kind of like a baseball card. Here's where I am today or solar system. Here, Here's where I am today. So let's deal with the thing that is impacting whatever your job or your relationships. Let's start with that. So is this a testing tool that's online or are you submitting information that's then going to be reviewed? Uh, we are using 90 years of science through the DSM and, and other modules that are basically used uh, around the world. And we are connecting the dots. So if somebody has um, insomnia, let's say, right, you probably might get some sleeping pills, but that is a somatic response to something else that's going on. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on insomnia, although I get it sometimes. What we do here is to connect the dots in all of these kind of questionnaires that you get at the walk-in clinic or e even at the hospital and say, this associates with this and this associates with that. And what we're trying to do is, is to give the care provider a full preliminary assessment of who is about to arrive in about five minutes. Um, so it's not a personality quiz, it's, it's using their, their own science and making that more efficient. We can't change the capacity problem, but if Jason's going in to the walk-in clinic, uh, you know, five times a month or something, what we can do is to start to uh, build, you know, a better referral system. So like, most GPs don't deal with trauma. They have two hours of training um, in their in their education. I think that's changing, but um, a lot of them don't understand neurodivergency or this and that. And it's not like they're used to fixing bones. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. so when a user, though, goes to the website. Yes. And they start to interact with these assessment tools. Mm hmm is it going to be a, uh, a question in like uh, with multiple choice answers or yes. are they going to be writing information and submitting it? We're using the standard tests. So we start with a framework test, which is to start to figure out and we use um, kind of uh, 
age region yeah and so forth to nobody's going to do 600 tests like it's just not well you could it's just own diagnosis i suppose but um so it is to get to the root of the things as as quickly as possible and it is that consolation and it's just connecting the dots you think you have depression or your partner thinks you have depression let's follow up what that is all of these things are similar um similar questions so is there a general assessment or if you say okay i think i've got depression am i going to go to a specific page uh, within the site that's going to uh, narrow it down or do you have to start with a, a broader view and then start to narrow down towards let's say depression uh we start with a general assessment yeah and then that leads our product and our algorithm whether it's on the individual's phone or whatever it might be to uh Areas they don't they don't know what they're answering, but we're trying to kind of have a lit, litmus test on, on on something, and it's like okay, let's not spend so much time there. Um, let's focus based on what we think might. So if you have um, ADHD, it's a pretty standard test. By the way, none of those you tests didn't are make perfect. up those tests. I mean, these are tests that are standardized. <clears throat> yeah, yes. yeah, they're 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 imperfect, but it's yeah. what we have. Like yeah. it's not like a blood test for. Um, vitamin B deficiency or something. So what we do is start to get to a point where we're confident to present the the more holistic picture of what's going on. And then we continue to follow up uh, over time, which is really not done, sadly. If you have singular PTSD and you have nightmares every night and you're prescribed, you know, uh, cognitive processing therapy and maybe some some medication or whatever it is okay so six months later are you still having nightmares every night lots of first responders that's uh, so that that's where we can i think make a difference and report that back to the care provider the production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you so then what is the uh, interaction between the user uh, and the care providers that comes through the site? Like, how does that work? Because I'm sure that a lot of people are going, okay, so I take the test and I get this result, now what? And how's that gonna then lead me to resources that are gonna help me address the challenges that I'm facing? Yeah, I mean, at this point in time, uh, and like I know uh, there's a lot more that we're, we plan to do, but the initial part is to cut out let's say somebody goes into uh, a treatment center and uh, somebody's paying five hundred dollars a day or sometimes a thousand and they only have six weeks so they have nine weeks uh, that first two weeks and this is again from a lot of the research we've done and a lot of the supporting uh, clinics around us that first two there's a portion let's say it's addictions of stabil stabilizing and then there's assessment but what we can get a head start on is to make that six weeks um, much more uh, kind of empowering to the individual and so then the individual can take this information and go to a to a uh, healthcare provider that's yeah. going to help them address their specific issues. So this is really helping you identify what your current state is yes. and where you are probably going to need uh, assistance. Yeah. So it's inverse right now. It's the care provider sending the individual saying, you're arriving. We know that you're arriving in three days. Uh, that's your next appointment and you're, you know, you're concerned about X. Um, in, in the perfect scenario, then they start the assessment. So again, five minutes before they arrive, the, uh, the pr practitioner or whatever it might be already has the same assessment that they would do anyway, mm -hmm. but they don't have the time to, to link all that up. Wow. So it's a, it's a valuable tool. For both yeah. the healthcare provider and for the individual. And for the individual. And the individual can take that. I mean, it's opt-in, so they have to accept it. And even if they move into something else, like a uh, whatever, different region or a different uh, care provider, they get to take their 
progress in their data and and move it to somebody else to say, here's where I started four years ago. Here's where I am now, but I'm still, this thing is either um, still impactful to me. Like nobody likes labels. I think that's part of it. But the labels give us um, access to help. Mm -hmm. Like nobody wants to have like a Boy Scout patch where they're like, I have PTSD and ADHD and uh, generalized anxiety disorder, but you do get access um, to funding or whether it could be substance use disorder or any of those things. Nobody wants the labels, but the labels give us the ability to both reflect, especially when in your 40s, you know, there's a little bit of grieving there, um, which is like, okay, that all makes sense. Um, but those labels just give us access. But they also give us a, a very real sense of what the state of our own well-being is. Yes. And what's the, you know, the, the greatest benefit of being able to say, okay, now I have a much clearer sense of why I'm in the state that I'm in and the way that I'm reacting to certain stimulus in my life. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're accelerating the rate at which somebody gets to that point, what's the payoff for them? Uh, less shame, less... Less shame. Because you're, you're looking at the world and everybody else has their um, stuff together and for some reason you, you're struggling with that. Um, maybe it's, you know, just surface base, but when people understand what's going on, their, their, their self acceptance, maybe not the other people around them increases because it, it could be their fault. Like we're all responsible for whatever actions we take, but some of these things are just, are just there. And, and, you know, the rates of suicide, the rates of depression are all about why can't I fit into this world? the way that whatever my sister can or so, so the beginning part is just acceptance i mean it's a long journey depending on you know what it might be uh, it is just to say okay well, i'm unique everybody's unique but uh and now i know where to start hopefully not when you're 40 but early on well, I think that having that uh, insight that gives you a sense of where you're at is vitally important. Mm -hmm. um, it is the thing that uh, allows you now to say, okay, I can make decisions that will hopefully um, move me in a direction to a greater sense of self, greater yeah. acceptance, greater peace in life. Uh, I think it's a great tool that you put together and uh, I wish you great success. And of course, for anybody who wants to uh, uh, access the site, we're gonna put it on the, the screen here for them to be able to find it. Thank you very Click much. Click that subscribe. Yeah, thank <laughs> okay. you very much for coming in and sharing thank this you. with us.